on behalf of Grace Lutheran Church in Horseshoe Bend and Redeemer Lutheran Church in Boise, Idaho, two of the several Treasure Valley Lutheran congregations, I welcome you to this morning's worship. Friends and neighbors and members, on this day we have a little bit more going on than usual in that it is the first Sunday of the month which we will celebrate Holy Communion. Also, it is traditionally the Sunday within the church where congregations celebrate All Saints Sunday, when we remember those who have died since last year's All Saints Sunday gathering. So on this day, wherever you're watching and whenever you might be watching, I invite you at this point to prepare for Holy Communion, which suggest that if you're able to grab some a cracker a piece of bread and a glass of juice or wine when we later will celebrate the eucharist and on this day in the prayers our closing prayer i'll have an additional prayer for those who have died for the saints and it makes sense today because in part as we continue the narrative lectionary and we become a little bit more familiar with our biblical stories. Today's story is about a person that many of us would consider a saint, but he's not, uh, but he's a prophet and well revered within the community of our Jewish brothers and sisters, as well as the Christian church, and that's the prophet Elijah. So, remembering saints, remembering those who have died this past year, keep them in mind and pray for them, as well as preparing for Holy Communion. As we do that, we begin our service with corporate confession. So let us begin our worship. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and with those with whom we worship together. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. What is this place? Where are we meeting? Only a house, the earth its floor, walls and a roof, sheltering people, windows for light, an open door. Yet it becomes a body that lives when we are gathered here. Our first reading today is John 12, 27 through 28. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour, 
No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. Word of God, way of life. Thanks be to God. Last week, we heard about part of the golden age of the hereditary kings. It was short-lived within the, the, the history of the Jewish, the Jewish story. David and Solomon, consolidating the tribes, building the temple, celebrating a glorious uh, less than probably 100 years or so. And then things began to fall apart. The nation as a whole, the whole 12 tribes, then they ended up splitting into two nations. In scripture, we hear about the, the kingdom of the south and the kingdom of the north. The south was hubbed around Jerusalem and called Judea, and that continued to be served and led by the family of King David. Now, the kingdom to the north was hubbed around uh, Samaria, and that was considered and called Israel. And there the other tribes gathered, and there was a lot of changes of leadership, uh, a lot of tension. In that part, the northern part, the northern kingdom, for hundreds of years, there was uh, treaties and, and kind of a... Um, sharing of cultures from, uh, from nations on either north and directly west and east of that northern part of what was the entire nation at one point, but that northern part around Samaria. So further north, Damascus, out towards the ocean. And in that arena, we have uh, the experience of many different leaders, a, a lot of coups, a lot of things going on. In that setting, though, there were folks who weren't connected by blood into leadership that provided a lot of leadership indirectly in the political as well as the religious affairs of the northern kingdom, what we in scripture would call Israel, not Judea. It's suggested that the writers, the chronicles of the pieces we're reading today, First and Second Kings, that they wrote about the northern history and all that was going on kind of as a, a warning to what could happen in the southern kingdom, in Judea, around Jerusalem, if that community didn't have its, kind of its act together as it moved forward with, with God. So, what we have in this in, in the text for most of the kings, and starting today, is that these charismatic leaders, known as prophets, are very strong advocates of Yahweh, the God of Israel. And they would often find themselves in intense battle, intense arguments with the, the leaders of Israel uh, who were open to other traditions, other gods. And on this day, we will hear about the god called Baal, which was a fertility god uh, and, and provides a background for uh, the life of, of the prophets and specifically on this day uh, for Elijah. So today, we're going to hear about one episode from Elijah's story that addresses the angst of many of God's people. In our first reading, we heard about the angst that Jesus had about what was unfolding in his life. And today, we have another story about the angst of a man of God hundreds and hundreds of years ago, 3,000 years ago. Now, the background of Elijah, which I think is important, is that Elijah probably was a father that's how he's referred to in scripture, of kind of a countercultural group within the nation of Israel. The group lived differently, they dressed differently, they marched by a proverbial different drum. 
than the political leaders of their time, the masses of their time. This Elijah is, is a person who had all kinds of abilities. He could stop and he could start rain. He raised the people from the dead. He multiplies food. And one of the classic stories is that he is lifted up into the heavens, into a chariot, does not, does not experience a natural death, but he is lifted up on a chariot as his protege, Elijah, watches him kind of ride off into the sunset, if you will, into the heavens. Later in, the, in our Christian scriptures, we meet him again when Jesus is meditating about you know, his, his life, right before he enters into the, his last week of his life on earth, when he experiences from the perspective of Peter, once of his disciples, a mountaintop experience. And there we have Jesus, we have Moses, and we have Elijah. And we have Peter experiencing that offering to build tents so they can all have a place to hang out. Well, for, for the tradition, Jesus is accompanied by the representative of the law, Moses, the Torah, and the representative of all that the prophets had to say by Elijah. So that's, that's the background that we have. Now, what's kind of fun, it's longer than we have time to read, but in the verses that precede today's reading, Elijah just has been proving to all those who will see that his God, that Yahweh, is much more powerful than the God Baal. And at the end of the contest between the, the prophets and the priest of Baal and singular Elijah, where Elijah triumphs in what was happening, he then turns around and by himself slews or takes a sword, if you will, the 450 prophets of Baal. So it was, it's a big, big day for, for Elijah. And then what happens is that the king of the northern kingdom of Israel, Ahab, goes back to the palace and says to the queen, his spouse Jezebel, you should have seen what I just saw. Elijah just brought down the very essence of God to win the contest, and then he slew all of your priests, all of your prophets, because Jezebel was an outsider of Israel and brought in the, the God of Baal. So she was really, really angry. So she essentially said, you know what, Elijah, I'm going to get you. I'm going to find you, and I'm going to kill you. So... What does Elijah do? He runs off. Although it seems a bit illogical that such a powerful man of God would be afraid, the story ties into the emotional angst followers of Yahweh, Jesus in his time, and for us face when we sometimes feel overwhelmed as we try to do what we believe God wants us to do. For Elijah, what he does is he heads out into the wilderness, he finds himself a tree, a broom tree, and he lies down under it and he just says, I'm just going to lie here and die. Jesus, as we heard in the first reading, had some angst as well. But as a role model, he kind of says, well, I got angst, but I'll trust you, God. I'll trust you. I don't know about you, but when I'm feeling a little overwhelmed, have a little angst, what I tend to do is not get up out of my bed and pull the sheets over my head and kind of just hide out. What do you do? Well, this, this story, this beloved story today, is one that, that helps us try to hear that um, God probably has some words for us as he has or as God has for, for Elijah. One of the interesting pieces here is we will hear where Elijah meets God and hears God. For us as 
people in our day and age where we tend to hold up the opportunity to engage God is when we celebrate our sacraments, whether it's in baptism or the Holy Communion, the Eucharist, as we will celebrate later today. But for today, we have this wonderful unfolding story of the angst of this powerful prophet, Elijah, and what God has to say to Elijah. His response, and this is my paraphrase, is that, Elijah, I'm not gonna honor your wallowing around in your own self-pity. Just go back to work, get up, get back into the life in your life, get back into the game, and just be my disciple. There are a whole lot of folks waiting to do their parts. Please, get up and do yours. So let's read from the lesson today from 1 Kings. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a message to Elijah saying, so may the gods do to me and more also if I do not make your life like the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Then he, Elijah, was afraid. He got up and fled for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judea. He left his servant there, but he went himself a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough. Now, O Lord, take away my life for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly, an angel touched him and said to him, get up and eat. And he looked and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank, and then he went in the strength of that food 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb, the Mount of God. At that place, he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, What are you doing here? What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenants, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks into pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, throw down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king over Aram. Also, you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Zaphat, of Abel Melohla, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes the sword of Hazael, Yehu shall kill. 
And whoever escapes the sword of Yehu, Elisha shall kill. I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. Word of God, way of life. Thanks be to God. We pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Empowering God, when we feel weak and tempted to lose heart and give up on the work you have set before us, feed us with your spirit and breathe new life into us, opening our eyes to your purpose and showing us a way past our discouragement and into your promise. Out of the noise of this world, tune our ears to hear you in the silence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of creation, we seek your presence in the violent winds, in the earthquake, and in the fire. We find you in all places of your good creation, especially in the spaces of silence. Whether in silence or the roaring of nature, we know that creation is sheltered by your hands. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of encouragement and healing, when our strength has all but dried up, you offer us revival and refreshment. Cool our hot heads and pour your blessing over those who are fearful, discouraged, sick, or overwhelmed. We pray for all those on our prayers list and those we name at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your patience knows no bounds, and your love no ending. You have knit your people together in one communion, in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. At this time, we take a few moments to pause and remember those who have gone on to glory this past year. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. is this place? Where are we meeting? Only a house, the earth, its floor, walls and a roof, sheltering people, windows for light, an open door. Yet it becomes a body that lives when we are gathered here. No, our God is near. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love, you sent, to, sent us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and the suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, 
gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin, for the wholeness of life. Do this for the, remem for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, his resurrection, his ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O God, and unite the wills of all those who share this heavenly food, the body and the blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit all glory and honor be given now and forever. Amen. And as Jesus prayed, I invite you to join me in prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and save us from the time of trial. Save us from the time of trial. And we, we pray this, knowing that your kingdom and your power and your glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Come now to the banquet, for all is ready. We start first with the bread. The body of Christ given for you. Please take and eat. Take the vessel of wine or grape juice and take it with us all. The blood of Christ shed for you. We pray. O God, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. By your Spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Receive the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in that peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.